This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. There is a lot to talk about today, so on with the show. It was this time last week that Elon Musk unveiled Tesla's latest prototype Optimus robot and detailed some massive progress being made on full self-driving, Project Dojo and AI at Tesla's second AI day. And hot on the heels of that event, toward the end of this week, Elon Musk took to Twitter to confirm that Tesla has now officially begun series production of the Tesla Semi. While it is great to see the Tesla Semi finally in production five years after it was first unveiled, it is worth noting that we should probably expect production volumes of the Tesla Semi to be nowhere near Tesla's other production vehicle volumes, because the Tesla Semi uses a lot more resources than a passenger car. Musk reiterated the range of the first Tesla semis would be 500 miles or 805 kilometers, the larger of the two pack options offered, with PepsiCo taking delivery of the first Tesla semi on December 1st. Shortly after deliveries began earlier this year of Toyota's all-electric BZ4X crossover, the automaker announced a stop sale to rectify a safety issue with the same. At the time, we can't say that we were surprised. Toyota isn't known for its love of electric vehicles, and the BZ4X was a project that Toyota really didn't seem to care that much about. In fact, during the official recall to address a fault with production that left the wheels of some BZ4X cars prone to falling off, Toyota actually offered to buy back customers' cars, a move that, from the outside at least, looked like Toyota would rather the BZ4X wasn't even on the road. But this this week, after announcing it had rectified that fault, plus another previously undisclosed fault with the car, Toyota confirmed that sales and deliveries of the BZ4X have begun again. Here's hoping it's plain sailing from here on out, because frankly, more consumer choice is a good thing. Honda officially unveiled the 2024 Prologue EV this week, the first all-electric car to wear the Honda badge in North America since the Honda Clarity EV. Sized roughly between the Honda Passport and Pilot in the midsize SUV category, the Prologue looks fairly similar to the Chevrolet Blazer externally, and that's not surprising since both vehicles share the same GM Ultium platform and will be built on the same production line in Mexico. But but while the Honda Prologue shares much of its mechanical components with GM's new and upcoming electric vehicles, thanks to a joint partnership between the two companies, the interior is unmistakably Honda, with what looks to be a very well thought out interior that is neither too garish nor too ostentatious. Sadly, performance, range and price haven't been released yet, but so far, what do you think? When Ford unveiled the F-150 Lightning in 2021, its entry-level model, the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro, was given a headline price of under $40,000. That was an impressive price for a work truck, even if the truck was pretty stripped down in terms of its interior design. And it offered a great option to those who didn't want the more expensive XLT, Lariat or range-topping Platinum variants. But since that launch, Ford has put the price up not once, but twice, the second time this week. Now, the entry-level Ford F-150 Lightning Pro with standard range battery pack costs an eye-watering $51,974. Other models also get a $5,000 price rise, which is a real kick in the teeth for anyone who is hoping to get hold of one. Ford says current customers with confirmed orders will not be affected by the price hike. After two years of lower global electricity demand caused by more people working from home during COVID-19, global grid demand was back up for the first half of this year. This week, a new report by London-based think tank Ember shows data that shows that despite that demand, the grid just got cleaner. Analyzing global electricity demand during H1, it shows that renewable electricity met 100% of the increased demand, saving a 4% increase in 
fossil fuel generation and preventing 230 megatons of carbon dioxide from being emitted into the atmosphere. Moreover, a 36 terawatt hour drop in coal fired electricity production, a 23 terawatt hour drop in nuclear power generation, and a 1 terawatt hour drop in gas powered electricity generation means the grid is cleaner than ever before. The US based Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is one of the world's leading crash test agencies, and for automakers earning its Top Safety Pick or Top Safety Pick Plus is quite the accolade. Every year, the IIHS tests become more stringent, putting pressure on automakers to improve their car's crash test worthiness. And this week, we learned that the Ford Mustang Mark E just earned itself a good rating in the agency's updated side impact crash tests. The test, which now uses a heavier barrier, traveling faster than in previous years, is consequentially harder for cars to score well in, but better represents the average weight of a modern midsize SUV T-boning you at an intersection. Overall, the rating means all but the California Route 1 Mustang Mark E variant retain a top safety pick award for this model year, but in future years, the cars will need to up their game to keep that rating. Aptera has officially announced the start of solar cell production for its upcoming solar electric vehicle and, in doing so, has named its chosen solar cell supplier. Unlike most solar panels, which are created with all the cells oriented on the same plane, automotive body panel solar panels like those found on the Aptera and other cars like the Sono Sion and Lightyear One have to curve with the respective curves of the vehicle they are part of, creating some pretty big challenges to manufacturing. However, after months of testing and refining its various solar cell designs, Aptera has chosen Maxion Solar Technologies as its preferred solar cell production partner. According to the press release announcing the partnership, it does look as if Aptera is already working with Maxion built cells in various prototypes at its headquarters in Southern California. So watch this space. Most vehicles on the market today that have some form of semi-autonomous driver assistance feature use a combination of camera-based sensors, radar, ultrasonic sensors, and sometimes even LiDAR. As I'm sure you know, Tesla has been an outlier, choosing some time ago to eschew radar sensors in its cars, instead using cameras to help the car see the world around it. While it dropped radar from its vehicles though, Tesla did continue to build cars with ultrasonic sensors in its bumpers primarily to help with low-speed parking maneuvers. But this week, Tesla confirmed it's now ditching ultrasonic sensors in Model 3 and Model Y, making Tesla Vision System the only way that those cars will see what's around them. Tesla says the systems will improve over time, but warns for now, cars without ultrasonic sensors will initially not be capable of smart summon, auto park, summon, or parking assist. When it comes to envisaging what kind of future the auto industry has ahead of it, many automakers and auto industry executives remain sceptical of the part EVs will play. And in the last few years, we've seen various auto industry execs line up on the pro or anti-EV side, with many large companies like Volkswagen going all out on EVs. This week, we have a new executive and automaker to add to the list, Mercedes-Benz CEO, who told CNBC's Jim Cramer that, quote, step by step, we see the market turning, end quote, toward EVs. Digging deeper, he conceded that everyone has realized that climate change is real and that solving that is down to automakers and their engineers. He commented that Mercedes-Benz believes the switch from EVs will be a good thing for the company, especially given its position as a luxury automaker, because many EV buyers are buying luxury EVs. Over-the-air software updates are now very much a standard part of any new electric vehicle. First normalized by Tesla, although Tesla didn't come up with OTA, cellular connections to most modern EVs give us new features, bug fixes, and sometimes even things that weren't possible when we first purchased our vehicles. But while OTA is now common for EVs, it's not something I'd ever expect to see on an electric bicycle. However, this week, OK published a new over-the-air update that gives its OK Ranger fat tire e-bike a 50% boost in performance. Granted, it's not technically an over-the-air software update because the bike doesn't have its own SIM card. You have to download the update via a mobile phone app and then send it to the bike. 
it's still pretty darned cool. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question for you. Are you in the market for a new electric car? Because if you are, and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all of the information that you need to pick a car that's right for you, and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging and clean power at home. Follow the link below and start your journey today. Boeing supported electric air taxi company Whisk Aero has been busy working on bringing the dream of fully electric EV toll air taxis to commercial reality for some time now. We've covered the company on the channel before, detailing some of its previous prototypes, but this week the company celebrated a major milestone, the revealing of its Gen 6, its all-electric eVTOL craft that are designed to offer four-seat autonomous air travel. Not only is the craft ready for action, but Whisk Aero states it's market ready and can now apply for type certification with the Federal Aviation Authority in the US. With 12 electric rotors and a 50-foot wingspan, Whisk says it has a real world 144 kilometer, which is 77 nautical mile range, with reserves taken into consideration. And yes, this means we will definitely be keeping our eyes peeled for progress of its approval process. And finally, it is likely that if you are in the US or in indeed pay any attention to global news events, you are well aware of the devastation left behind after Hurricane Ian traveled through the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico and southeastern US states. Millions of people in affected areas are still without power, water and sanitation due to poor infrastructure and a lack of resources. And while the US federal government has issued a promise of aid, many of us are asking how we can make sure this doesn't happen again. The answer? Babcock Ranch, a development north of Fort Myers in Florida, which calls itself America's first solar-powered town. Thanks to careful design like underground power lines, backup batteries, and retaining walls to protect from flooding, the community is already pretty much recovered from Hurricane Ian, while communities nearby are still laid bare. If that isn't a demonstration of what's needed to make our grid more resilient, I don't know what is. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, why not switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch and doing so will help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back soon with more awesome content, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge, and I will be back next weekend for our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.